Welcome to my Spatial Analysis Podcast. Today I am going to be talking to you about a particular uh, point pattern analysis technique known as Ripley's K function. And I will actually be demonstrating the technique using some ecological data that I'm going to collect from right here in my own backyard. Now the data that I will be analyzing to demonstrate uh, Ripley's K function um, will be uh, these weedy dandelions that right now are everywhere on my uh, back lawn. And um, so this will be my point data set. I will define a, a study area and then um, pose a few questions about uh, whether or not these dandelions or just randomly distributed, or whether or not there's some kind of ecological process going on that uh, causes these dandelions to either cluster, um, you know, maybe related to uh, dandelion reproduction, or uh, maybe they're uh, they're dispersed, they're regularly spread over uh, over my lawn, and uh, in that case, you may um, hypothesize that. Uh, but there's some kind of competition going on between dandelions for uh, you know lawn space. Um, so that's my data set. Well, now I'll try to, to uh, kind of talk you through an explanation of Ripley's K function in, in a very general level. I've already mentioned that it's a multiscalar uh, technique, and that I could determine you know clustering, regularity, randomness for a, a continuum of distances within my study area. That is that um, since I know the intensity or the density of dandelions in my study area, because I've counted 263 for within this 400 square foot area, that um, if I was to take a radius of you know any size up to one-fourth my study area, that I should be able to uh, determine the expected number of dandelions that would be uh, within that radius, say, if I center it on any uh, dandelion in my study area. And so, you know, by, by basically changing that, you know, R of uh, radius, um, and as it moves out, you know, the density changes. So, you know, at, at one scale, you know, you may it may be consistent with the expected uh, density or intensity for, say, randomness, but you get at a larger scale, then you may see clustering. So that's that's what's uh, particularly uh, useful about Ripley's K function. So now I will uh, move inside and uh, do some computer work. Now that I brought my point data into the ArcMap GIS environment. I'm going to run Ripley's K function using the Spatial Statistics Toolbox. Specifically under Analyzing Patterns, I'm going to open up the Ripley's K function tool. And here I'll set my parameters. I choose my point data shapefile. I name a table to store the output. I select the number of distance bands, and I choose 20. Um, you choose the number of permutations for uh, realizations of a Poisson process using the observed lambda, and this will build uh, confidence intervals around my expectation of complete spatial randomness. My beginning distance will be zero, and I'll increment in a half a foot, so 20 distance bands will take me out to 10 foot, or one half my uh, width of my study area. Rip I'll use a Ripley's edge correction, and the study area method is minimum closing rectangles, which is very close to my 20 by 20 foot study area. And I'll select OK and run it. Here's a graph of the results. The red line is our Ripley's K function. The two blue lines are the confidence uh, envelopes for our expectation of complete spatial randomness. Now, of the intensity, of the observed intensity is actually higher than what we'd expect with complete spatial randomness. The line, as is the case here, would be above the confidence intervals, indicate clustering. If we had lower intensity than expecting, 
then our K function would actually fall below uh, the confidence envelopes. But as you see, from 0 to 10 feet in all distance bands, um, we have significant clustering of our dandelions. Uh, a final postscript, uh, during data collection, I realized uh, groups of dandelions actually share common uh, plants. Um, so clustering at the, the shortest distances um, is kind of a given, but uh, our, our overall patterns of clustering did seem to hold up for you know, up to 10 feet.